All right, folks, uh, I don't have this lid screwed on, but this is today's project. It is an RF power tap, and uh, we're going to get in a little bit into where I got the idea to do this. This is not my invention. I did not come up with this. Um, it's a pretty common design or a take on a pretty common design. I did see some YouTube videos where somebody built one of these, which got me watching a couple other ones. And I did track down an article. We're going to take a look at that. But um, I have a buddy that I do a lot of hand projects with, uh, Jim, over at FEP Labs. And I was like, bro, we got to build these. So this is my build video where we're going to build this. We're going to test it. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what happened along the way. So stay tuned. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all your PCB assembly needs. You can use their website to do any type of design or prototype work that you need for your project specifically. PCB Way has a number of service offerings, from basic specs to full featured PCBs and even PCB assembly options. You can use this form to get a quote as to what it would cost for your project. PCB Way offers a robust assembly service. This assembly service will allow you to choose from mixed or through hole components, double or single sided PCBs, installation and rework. If you need any help on any step of the process, PCB Way's friendly and helpful staff is only a few mouse clicks away. So as I mentioned, I did see a couple of different articles and a couple of different YouTube videos on how to make a power tap. And it seems that most of them referenced back to this particular article, Simple RF Power Measurement by Wes Hayward and Bob Larkin. So this is the blueprint, or this is the plan that we are going to use for our particular project. Making power measurements from nanowatts to hundreds watts. It's easy with these simple homebrewed instruments. Um, so here is the power tap in the center of the screen with these end connectors. And then here's a meter. I've already got a meter that we're going to use. We're going to use a nano VNA. We're going to use spectrum analyzers and things like that. So I don't need this particular piece. Now, maybe we'll build one at some point in time, but that time's not today. Um, we are going to build this one that's in the center. So let me go ahead and take a better look at that. Um, if you wanted to get this article, you could just Google these guys call signs, and I'm pretty sure you would you would get it. The other one is is that this article goes back to the June 2001 QST. So if you type in Google June 2001 QST power tap, uh, you should get this article as well. All right. Um, scrolling down, here's the schematic for the power tap here on the uh, left hand side it says figure three a tap that attenuates high power signal for use with the power meter see the text in figure four for the discussion of the capacitor labeled c which is right here so you, here you see j1 and j2 and they're your rf connectors uh, your input and output uh, in this project they use n type connectors we're going to use so239 this l1 or an inductor uh, down here you can see is a one by one and a half inch piece of brass sheet brass now, we'll take a look at the materials that i'm going to use in a minute and then you have these three resistors r1 a through c um, three series connector uh, 820 ohm half watt carbon film that's not exactly what we have but we have close and then this uh, shorting resistor down here is 51 ohm quarter watt carbon film so let's take a quick look at, uh, this is the drawing, and this is what this thing's really going to look like when we're done with it. Um, and it talks a little bit about seeing this diagram for C1, which is this capacitor. Here they say that it's a 22 AWG insulated hookup wire that extends a half, uh, 0.6 inches beyond the edge of the tinned metal piece. And almost resides against the two resistor bodies. Uh, what I had seen is, is that somebody had taken the leg of the resistor and bent it around and used that. So we're going to try that first, and if it doesn't work, then we'll go ahead and look at uh, something like this 22-gauge hookup wire. This whole thing is made in a Hammond 1590A die-cast box. Now, I'll have some links to some parts in the description if you wanted to buy some of this stuff. But these are often called stomp boxes. I don't know why, but um, I was able to get one off of Amazon for about 6 bucks, give or take. Um, okay, let's take a look at the parts. Okay, and you can see that um, this is pretty basic, the parts that we're going to be using here. Um, the first thing is, here is the Made in China Hammond box. This is the part number. I don't know if this is a legit Hammond box or a clone or a knockoff or something like that. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. Okay. 
I'm gonna put a nice scratch in there. Um, one thing I'll say is, is that this thing is tiny, and uh, here are some screws to put it together. But uh, we'll be working in there. We have these connectors. that I mentioned and uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to drill some holes in this box to get these to fit that will probably be off camera because I don't want you to see how terrible I am with the drill uh, then down here we're going to put a BNC connector in and um, this will be the part that you connect to your instrument um, let's see what else we got I ordered some some uh, resistors so we have these one watt one ohm to one kilo ohm, one percent carbon film. Here's 47. It said 51 in the instructions. I don't think I've got 51. Um, I'll look around in some of the other uh, boxes that I have with some resistors and see if I have something in there. Also, these are one watt, not quarter watt. Uh, this is one watt, not half watt, but these are the 820. And we'll test all these with a multimeter. <clears throat> Finally, the brass strip. Um, I got this off of Amazon, and then there's the part number that you can see there. So it's one inch wide, so i got to cut about an inch and a half of this and uh, put it in this box. Oh, one other thing. This brass strip, they said that uh, <clears throat> it was difficult to solder to this brass strip, so I picked up this high-flux solder wire. And um, if you look at the chemical composition of this, it's lead-free solder but um it's silver it's supposed to have silver in here because silver is supposed to make it easier to solder to brass anyhow we'll see let's uh let's go on and get ahead and get into the build so whenever i do projects like this what i like to do is put everything i'm going to need into a bin or a box and that makes it a little bit easier for somebody like me so what i did here is i grabbed some parts uh, one thing is that green vice in the middle i picked that up for about 25 bucks like 10 years ago, and um, I use it all the time. In this case, we took it outside and we connected it to the front bumper of the Jeep, and then uh, I was able to do my drilling. I started off with a small drill bit, somewhere around 7, 30 seconds or something like that, to get some pilot holes in uh, for the center of these, and then I used a step drill bit uh, to increase in size until I got the, the right size. Then I used a Sharpie to put the holes in for the mount points. And it was pretty easy. And then on the end of this device, uh, I did use tape. You saw that in the last picture. Uh, so my drill bit wouldn't walk at first. Um, again, I started with a pilot hole and then carefully went up bigger and bigger until the BNC fit. Alrighty, let's uh, get to the next part. Okay, uh, howdy everybody. We're back. This is the box post drilling. So here is where we drilled out for the BNC. And then here you can see for the SO239s. This one might have been able to be a little bit cleaner, but uh, it's going to work. Now, what I didn't show you earlier is, is how we are going to mount these here. Um, we need some hardware. So take a gander of these nuts. Um, this is just a kit that I picked up a while back. It's got M2 through M4 nuts and bolts of various sizes. Uh, I'm not sure which ones we're going to use right now. i got to figure it out. So let me go ahead and do that, and then uh, we'll come right back. Okay, so I was able to use one of these M3x8s. Um, I put it in here, I put a little washer on, and then I put the nut. These are not tight, so let me go ahead, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get these all loaded up. Uh, we'll come back and talk about it. I actually made a mistake already. Actually, that's not too bad. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this... Like, if you take a look at these SO239s, you have a little bit of an indent here for connecting solder. You want to make sure that that's facing as up as possible. So actually, I'm going to adjust that. But uh, let's go ahead and get that set up. And once this is done, what I'll do is I'll put a little Loctite on these. Uh, we're fingernail polish because I'm cheap. And what that'll do is that'll help keep everything in place. But I'm not going to do that first because I want to get everything sized appropriately. But I will have to Loctite the bottom of these prior to putting in the brass strip. Otherwise, I won't be able to get in there to put the Loctite in. All right, so let me go ahead and get these all uh, set up correctly. And then we'll be right back. All right, so we had a couple of bumps in the road, but we always do. Down here, you can see I'm missing a bolt, and it is just too dang on close to this 
piece here, the standoff, and then the bottom. I cannot get the nut to to screw onto the bolt. So we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go down a man, and uh, we're only gonna have seven holding these in. These are all pretty tight. I need to hit them with some Loctite or some nail polish, as I mentioned. And then um, one more thing to watch out for. I'm gonna go to put the lid on. It doesn't fit. And the reason it doesn't fit is because there is a lip right here, and that lip is now hitting these bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this lid with a Sharpie, and then I'll know where I need to go and uh, grind that down or file that down. How exactly I'm going to grind that down, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. It'll be a game time decision. But uh, that's where we are with the box right now. And uh, I'll come back as we get ready to solder all the pieces in. Thanks. All right, so what I did is I took this out back, and uh, you might be able to see I dremeled off the lip right here. And uh, I get a much, much better seal on this than uh, we did previously. You can see right there. Um, still a little bit of a gap on this side, but I think when I tighten that down, we're going to be just fine with that. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that all my threads stay tight. So I'm going to use this clear Revlon nail polish and just dab a little bit on each one of these threads. And that should uh, help me out. Once that's done and dry, we're going to go ahead to soldering in our resistors and then cutting and preparing our brass strip. So uh, we're making good progress here, boys. This stuff smells horrible. So very scientifically, I measured off one and a half inches of this brass strip. Um, that's what the instructions call for. And then we're going to use these precision shears, Milwaukee, uh, that I got somewhere along the line to just go ahead and cut this. Um, I'm hoping this isn't going to be too difficult, but uh, we'll find out right about now. Well, <laughs> that didn't do much. But, uh, let's see if we can go this way. I might have to find a different way to, to go ahead and cut these things. I think I saw in one of the videos the guy was using scissors or something. I, I guess you need some kind of shears or something like that. Let's see if we can get this thing with just rear grip strength. All right, well, I tried and I tried and I could not cut this. Uh, maybe I'm just a weakling. So I cheated. I went and I got uh, these things, which are called tin snips. And hopefully I can do this without messing up. Now, would you look at that? <clears throat> Taking a quick look at this, um, I was able to actually get that fourth bolt in. It's not as tight as I would like down here, but um, I did put the nail polish on there. So now we've got eight bolts holding these on, and it looks official anyway. Now for this uh, piece of brass strip, what you want to do is we want to go underneath and we want to mount that. We're going to solder it to those posts there. Um, we do want to push this back a little bit, which is going to require us cutting the edges off because of these standoffs here so let's go ahead and uh and do that real quick it did not say how much so we're going to cut about that much off hopefully i can replicate that on this side that's close enough all right, so the next thing is, is now we're going to break out the soldering iron, and uh, we're going to have to solder this in here. I'm not 100% sure how that's, going to, how that's going to play out yet, so give me a few minutes to figure this out. All right, so what we've done is, is that we have some paper towel bunched up underneath it here, yeah, and that is giving us some upward pressure on this, on this brass plate. Now, uh, what I don't want is I don't want the brass plate to touch these standoffs or the back because that could short out... Um, the unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder these points down onto this brass plate and then once that's done I'm going to carefully extract the paper towel and uh, we're going to see how that goes and let me go get the solder iron. Alright, uh, solder iron's hot and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started here. 
Now, one thing is, is I'm going to say is I don't want to hear a bunch of mess about my soldering technique. So let's go ahead and start heating this up and see what we can do. So what I want to do is I want to try to get this brass plate and that center conductor hot enough that I can get uh, some melted solder on there that'll bond. But I want enough of it on there to be sturdy. Like I don't want to have to open this thing up and repair it a dozen times. So I still think that this is a little suspect. So what uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick continuity test with the multimeter. So you will hear that beeping if we do have connectivity from center conductor to center conductor. And uh, it looks like it works. So uh, we're in business, folks. Let's go ahead and get some of this cleaned up, and then we'll do some of the other side. Okay, so I've taken these um, resistors. These are the 820s, and uh, I've got them here. Let's go ahead and just do some quick testing with the multimeter and uh, see where we end up. So we got 828. That's close. A25 is close. A26. So what I need is I need to have three of these connected in series. So what I'm thinking is doing something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll run a little bit of solder on these twisted pieces and then and then snip them off and then uh, we should be good to go let's go ahead and uh, do some soldering that's a lot easier than soldering that uh, brass plate i'll tell you that Okay, so what we've done is, is that we've kind of gotten all these connected together. And there was a little capacitance wire that they recommended you use coming off of here. Uh, but one of the videos I saw, the person used the leg of the resistor. So that is what we're going to attempt. So what I want to do now is I want to solder this to this brass plate that uh, is all sketchy. And then once that happens, I'm going to take this end here and I'm going to trim that. And I'm going to connect that to the BNC connector. And then we put our 50 ohm jumper in. So let's do that work now. All right, I believe that is done. Now we need to get this part connected. And uh, that's gonna take a little bit of finagling. All right, there it is. Now let's see if we can uh, bridge this with some solder. And I think that's gonna do it. Now let's get this piece out, the 50 ohm, in our case, 47 ohm uh, resistor. Let's see what we can find. Let's break out the multimeter. We, we like to test these things. That's why we have multimeters, they're not for show. So I'm going to try to get one as close to 50 as I can. Um, I actually think that on the instructions, they wanted 51. Oh, no. Well, they all came out to be about 47 points something. So we are just going to go ahead and we're going to pick one. And then we are going to use that. Uh, and hopefully it will be close enough. If not, uh, we can we can rebuild. Let's get this thing set up in here. So this resistor needs to be a jumper from the center conductor here, right about here, to the ground or the shield on the cable. So that's what we're hoping to do. Let's go ahead and solder this top piece in first and see how that goes. Okay, we're going to give that a second to dry. All 
All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend this and hopefully not break anything. Just down a little bit so I can get that to solder in here without making too much mess. You want to keep all of your legs or your runs as short as possible so that way you don't introduce any stray capacitance. And I think that that's going to be about as short as we're going to get it. Some people sh save all this junk. I don't. I, d I have too much stuff as it is to be saving junk like that. Now I get that it could be a lifesaver. Some people are like, without them, without them spares, boy, I'd be up the creek. And that might be true, but I'm, not, I'm going to throw them in the trash. And that would appear... Sorry if that was off camera. That would appear soldered to me. So here we are. We have our two SO239 connectors. We have the brass plate for inductance. We have our three capacitors in series with the capacitance uh, wire. I don't know what you would call that, tiger tail. And then we have this short down here that uh, goes into our BNC connector. So the way this works is, is that you would feed a signal in here. You would put a load on the other side. You could go the other direction if you wanted. Uh, for a load, we we're just going to use a dummy load, 50 ohm dummy load. And then we're going to feed this into an instrument, and we are going to measure to see if this thing attenuates as advertised. Okay, we are going to do this in Nano VNA Saver, which is some software that makes this a little bit easier. But I wanted to show you that we have a Nano VNA H4 fully calibrated, and we're running a through test. So that means that we have a signal coming out of channel zero. It's called an S21, and it's coming out of here, and it's going in here. And this blue line here represents any insertion loss that we may see as a result of this connection. Right now, there is no insertion loss, or it's negligible. So when you take a look at it, I can move this marker, which is this little chevron across the top. And as I move that, I see a frequency adjustment here, and then I get a measurement over here. Now, it's very hard to see on this, and this is why we're going to use software, but right now it's 0.04 dB insertion loss. So as I move up, we're at 0.03. Let me come all the way down here. 0.05. So that's ex what we would expect to see. When we insert this into this chain, we're expecting to see some more insertion loss in the neighborhood of negative 40 dB. So let's do that and see if we have the intended results of this. All right, so we're hooked up here, and uh, I'm pretty happy. Now, this is more a result of luck than it is expert engineering. So we have the dummy load hooked up to the one side. We have our signal coming in from channel zero on our nano VNA, and it traverses this long line of this capacitor wire and these, and these resistors. Comes out this BNC connector and into channel one of the nano VNA. Now, so you, if you remember from the last video clip, this line was up four. One, two, three, four. It was up here. You can see a little blue arrow here showing you that this is the reference. Again, we're going to take a quick look at this on software, but I wanted to test it this way before I did anything else. And as I move the chevron like I did before across the frequencies, I see a metric up here. And right now we are at 40.29. And if I scroll this way, we're at 40.2. So this looks like it attenuates the signal roughly 40 dB, which is what we were targeting. Fortunately, I'm not going to need to go in here and make any kind of modifications or adjustments. We're going to leave it as is, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Okay, so what we have here is an NOVNA saver, and we have a calibration um, for 10 sweeps is 1,001 data points, I believe, 1,010 data points. We're going to be going from 6.5 megahertz all the way to 30 megahertz, and then you can see here on our S21 gain chart, this blue line that is sitting right on zero dB. And that's because we are doing a through or through measurement straight from channel zero to channel one using the blue coaxial cable. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit pause and then I'm going to connect the RF tap in series and then we should see this go from line zero down to line 40. So let me go. Okay, we have the RF tap in line. So what I want to do now is I want to hit sweep and I want to go ahead and rerun that sweep. And then you can see as we are sweeping the settings, we have a little bit of a bouncy line uh, on 40. And, um, but it is right at 40. So we're getting about the 40 dB of attenuation that we want to get. Um, this is not perfectly flat, which is a little bit of an issue. It could be because I don't have the lid on the, on the box or the device. 
But uh, so far, I'm pretty happy. This was a fun project. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and coming along for the ride. Um, I'll have links to all these components below if it's something that you're interested in uh, doing yourself. It was kind of fun, and it was a learning experience. So thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.